Okay, so as you all know, we usually start with um, the power stern a long axis view. So all protocols uh, usually start with the power stern a long axis view. Again, as a, as a reminder, to get the power stern a long axis view, the transducer is in the third or fourth left intercostal space and the mark is towards the patient's right shoulder. And you make the necessary adjustments, okay? Because if you, if you put your transducer in that location, you're not automatically gonna get a nice picture. You have to make some small adjustments to get uh, a nice picture, okay? And you should get something looking like this, okay? This is the power stern long axis view. And we're going to pause it. Again, this is the posterior wall right here. Below the posterior wall, you have the pericardium. Okay, pericardium is right there. This structure here is the descending aorta. Okay, then we have the mitral valve, the mitral leaflet. This is the anterior uh, mitral leaflet. And this is the posterior leaflet. This is the left atrium. Again, blood uh, travels from our flow from the left atrium across the mitral valve into the left ventricular cavity. This is your left ventricular cavity. This is your ventricular septum. This is what we call the left ventricular outflow tract. Your aortic valve is right here. Your aortic valve opens and closes, opens in systole, closing diastole. And this is your aortic root going into the ascendant aorta, and your right ventricle is right there. So let's put it in play. Okay, so posterior wall, LV cavity, septum, right ventricle. This is the aortic valve opening and closing, and the mitral valve. Okay. When, you, when you're doing your measurements, it's okay to make your picture as large or the, as, as possible. But when you first get your power stern on the long axis view, make sure the picture is not, not too large because you need to see the descending aorta. You need to see the descending aorta because if there's problem with the aorta, descending aorta, dissection, aneurysm, stuff like that, then you can readily see it. And then after, you identify your descending aorta, then you can enlarge your picture in such a, a, a fashion that you lose your descending aorta because now you're going to do your measurements. Okay, so this is your power sternal long axis view. We're not teaching Doppler today, so we're just going to ignore the color flow Doppler. Okay, but um, power sternal long axis view. And again, you're going to do your measurements. The measurements that you're going to do in the power sternal uh, long axis view is your diastolic measurements and the systolic measurements. So you have to know what, uh, which measurements you do in diastole and which measurements you do in systole. Okay. So you can see the anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet. And if you look closely, you can see the cord, coordinate tendony, which attaches to the papillary muscles, okay? So in systole, the heart comes in and diastole goes out, okay? So you, you do your measurements. So the diastolic measurements includes measuring your, your septum from one side to the, to, to the other side. The measurements are done at the tip of the mitral leaflet. And then you measure the LV cavity size in diastole. Remember, in diastole, the mitral valve is open, the aortic valve is closed. It corresponds to the onset of the QRS. So again, echo is gated. And what, when we say gated, is is either systole or diastole. So you make your uh, adjustments according to the, your ECG. Now, your systolic measurements, you, uh, so remember, the aortic root is done in diastole, even though it's shown in systole. You do your left atrium, you measure the left atrium, 
and your LV cavity in systole. All measurements are done at the tip of the mitral leaflet. With left atrium, it, it's done from what we call the leading edge to the leading edge. And uh, we'll go over that a little bit. So, so again, you have to know the measurements that you do in diastole and the measurements that you do in systole. The diastolic measurements include the septal thickness, LV cavity in diastole, the posterior wall, and the aortic root. Those are the diastolic measurements. In systole, you're going to measure the left atrium, LV cavity size in systole, and the LVOT diameter. Okay? All right, so now this is short axis at the level of the aorta. So with the transducer in the third or fourth left intercostal space, you're going to do clockwise rotation. You're going to rotate the probe clockwise to the one or two o'clock position. The, the, the angle of the transducer should be downwards, and you're going to get this view. Okay, this is your aortic. Uh, uh, your aorta with your aortic valve uh, uh, inserted or uh, in the center. And then towards the, the right, you have the pulmonic valve right here. This is your right ventricle outflow track, pulmonic valve. Main pulmonary trunk is right there. Over this side, you have your tricuspid valve, the right atrium, and your uh, Atrial septum is right there. So you put it in play, you can see pulmonic valve opening and closing. We are going to just ignore the um, Doppler for the time being. So the pulmonic valve opening and closing, tricuspid valve over here, the aorta with the aortic valve in place. This is your atrial septum. This is your right atrium, left atrium. Okay. Again, pulmonic valve, the main pulmonary trunk is right there. Okay, so these are Dopplers, and we have a separate session to go over Dopplers. But you have to know your views. You have to know the windows that, um, you need to 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 uh, to get the different views, okay. So short axis at the level of the aorta. You can see there are three cusp. You can see there are three cusp, but you always have to identify the three cusp. You have to know how to 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 identify them. And if you remember in the um in the lecture. So the atrial septum is adjacent to the non coronary cusp. And then you have the right and the left. We'll go over that again. All right. So this is your atrial septum right here. This is the atrial septum because this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium. So adjacent to the... Uh, Atrial septum is the non coronary cusp, which is right there. Sorry about that, the player decided to just okay, so again power stern a long axis view. Okay. So when you do your, your, your scan, 
try and get at least a minimum of 10 beats, okay? You don't want to let it go on forever. So a minimum of 10 beats um, of each uh, view. If, if there is pathology, if uh, there is some abnormality, you might, you can, you, you might want to get a little bit more, but 10 beats is a, is, is a good uh, sample size. So that's your parasternal long axis view to get to the, well, again, the measurements that you're going to do in your parasternal long axis view, you're going to have diastolic measurements and systolic measurements. And these are testable. And all tests that you're going to get, you know, you will be tested on these things. So in diastole, you measure the septum, LV cavity size in diastole, the posterior wall, then in diastole, and the aortic root. So the aortic root should be measured in diastole, and the measurement is at the tip of the mitral leaflet. And then your systolic measurements, you're going to do the left atrium, LV cavity size in systole, and the left ventricular outflow tract. Okay. When we say leading edge to leading edge, leading edge means the first layer that you come across. And then again, the first layer. So it will be from the top to the top. And that's how you do the measurements. Okay. So again, your aortic root should be measured in diastole, not systole. And you want to measure the, um, the left ventricle flow tract diameter as well. Okay. So to get your short axis at the level of the aorta, your rotator transducer to the one or two o'clock position. You're going to put the angler, the angle of the transducer downwards, so the face should be upward, and you'll get your short axis at the level of the aorta. You have to be able to 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 identify the structures in each view. So again, your Atrial septum is right here. The cusp adjacent to that is the non coronary cusp. This would be your right, and the left would be over there. In the normal, uh, the normal aorta has three cusps or three leaflets. So when you're doing your studies, you need to identify all three cusps or leaflets. So again, short axis at the level of the uh, aorta. To the right, you have the pulmonic valve. To the left, the tricuspid valve. Okay, so this would be your septal leaflet and the anterior leaflet. Okay, you can see the three cusps in the uh, aortic valve. When the aortic valve opens, it opens in a triangular fashion. When it closes, close, you say the Mercedes Benz sign. That is because you have three cusps, three leaflets. Okay, tricuspid valve, the, the, the septal leaflet, and the anterior leaflet. Okay, this is your atrial septum. Adjacent to that is your non coronary cusp. Then this would be your right and the left, okay? This is your left atrium right over here. So remember, the transducer angle has to be pointing downwards so you can get short axis at the level of the aorta, okay? Then you're going to move now 
to the the base or where you have the mitral valve. So you're going to move the angle. So remember, the angle was first downwards. You're going to move it a little bit upwards. And these are fine movements. Okay. So you can see the mitral valve opening and closing. The anterior leaflet is there. Posterior leaflet is right there. And then the wall, this is your anterior wall, inferior wall. The lateral wall is over here. And this is the septum. Okay. The mitral valve opening and closing. The anterior leaflet is on top and the posterior leaflet is below. Now, if you move your transducer even further upwards, you'll get to the level. You'll move from the, so this person skipped the papillary muscle, but you move it further upwards and you get the papillary muscle. Okay, and yeah, you have to identify the papillary muscles. Okay, now to get to the apical four chamber view, you move your transducer now to the junction of the uh, mid cavicular line and the fifth intercostal space. So, the junction of the mid cavicular line, fifth, fifth intercostal space. The, the marker on the transducer is about the four or five o'clock position, and the heart should be standing straight up like this. It's your left ventricular cavity, left atrium. Your mitral valve is right here. This is the septal leaflet, sorry, anterior leaflet. Anterior leaflet of the mitral valve, posterior leaflet. <laughs> Hello? All right, so again, the apical four chamber view, LV cavity, left atrium. This is the anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet. Your descending aorta is right there. This is your atrial septum, right atrium. Your tricuspid valve is right here. This is the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve and the anterior leaflet. This is your ventricular septum. This is the RV, right ventricle. Okay. So in systole, you can see the heart uh, contract in diastole. Okay. So mitral valve anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet, the ventricular septum, apex. Okay, so this is the lateral wall and this is your septum and this is the apex right up there. Okay. One, one of the things that we all, that we teach you guys, so the, this if you look closely, you can see this is the tricuspid valve right there. And you can see that the tricuspid valve is lower in, into the ventricle than the mitral valve. So if you have, if, if you didn't know which side was the left side from the right side, the mere fact that this AV valve is lower in the ventricle than this one, Identify this as a tricuspid valve. Okay, you you have two ventricles there, the AV valve which is lower lowest lower sorry the AV valve which is lower in the ventricle is the tricuspid valve. Okay, and all tests they always test you in that, and that identifies the right uh, ventricle. Your apical four chamber view, you can see the heart has to be vertical. If the heart is not vertically, 
uh, vertical, then it's it's not an accurate um, assessment. Again, we're going to skip the Dopplers. Dopplers are extremely important, but we're just going over the scanning views. So this is your apical four chamber view. Remember, to get the apical five chamber view, you just pull the angle of the transducer downwards. Okay, just pull it down a very, very fine movement, and the five chamber view will come, you know, will pop up right in front of you. You're descending the arteries right there. And it's also important to, to identify the pulmonary veins. Remember there are two you can see in this view. This is the right uh, upper superior right over here. And then the left of the right there. So this is a five chamber view where you can see the uh, aortic valve and the ascending aorta. You get that view by just pulling the transducer downwards a little bit. So the five chamber view, and with the five chamber view, you can see the moderator band in the right ventricle over there. You get that view by just pulling the, the angle of the transducer downwards a little bit. The moderator band is right there. This is the moderator band. Okay. So right side of the heart. You see the tricuspid valve is lower in the ventricle than the mitral valve. Moderate the balance right over there. This is uh, actually an M mode study, but again, we're not going over M mode. Okay, and then this is the another Doppler. All right, so from the uh, four chamber view to get to the two chamber view, you rotate your transducer counterclockwise. So from the view to get your apical four, which is at the junction of the mid clavicular line with the fifth interspace, or if the patient's heart is enlarged, you feel for the apex and you, that's where you put your transducer. To get the two chamber view, you're going to counterclockwise rotation. Very fine, minuscule uh, movements, and you want to get something looking like 
I mean, this is this is a semblance. So this is a uh, your two chamber view, or uh, some semblance of a. So this supposed to be against the septum, uh, but this is it's not a very good two chamber view. So as you can see, we do Doppler in, in everything. So the Doppler is extremely important. So that's something you have to learn well as. All right, so if this was a good two chamber view, this would be the inferior wall and the anterior wall would be over there, okay? Counterclockwise rotation to, to, to get your two chamber view. So this is Doppler. We're not going to talk about anything Doppler. So you see two chamber view. To get to the three chamber view now, you do further counterclockwise rotation. So after you get your two chamber view, if you do counterclockwise rotation a little bit more, you get your three chamber view. And three chamber because you get your LV cavity, the left atrium. Uh, and your uh, aortic valve, your uh, aortic roots, and the ascending aorta. So this is your inferior lateral wall, and this is your anterior septal wall. Okay, your three chamber view. Further counterclockwise rotation from the two chamber view. Okay, you have to be able to, to, to label all the structures that you are. Okay. In the three chamber view. So I think that the the next session after your scanning view is the assessment of LV systolic function and I think after that then we do Dopplers. But Doppler is an integral part of your study. So this is your subcostal view. So you identify your your, your xiphoid process and just a little bit below the xiphoid pro, uh, process your, your you put your transducer the liver is over here, the right side of the heart is right there, and this is the left side of the heart, okay? So your right ventricle is right here, tricuspid valve is right there, right atrium. This is your ventricular septum, LV cavity, okay? Mitral valve is right inside there, and left atrium is up there. So you can see with the subcostal view, you get a good view of the ventricular septum and also the atrial septum. So if you're looking for a septal defect, it's a very good view to 
liposuctal defect, and also um, pericardial effusion. This is your IVC, inferior vena cava, and your hepatic vein, which drains into the um, IVC. So you, you do your IVC measurements at about this location, okay? You have to measure your IVC. And we also do Doppler. So we do Doppler in everything. And, and M, this is an M mode, as a matter of fact, to, to measure the, um, the width. So you can measure the, the, the width of the IVC. And then we do Doppler of the hepatic vein. So you have to know your scanning views, know which window to get the different views, and you have to be you have to be able to label all the structures in the views. All right, so that's. Uh, a very quick overview of um, scanning view. We're, we're, 